I previously showed that this white poster putty is acoustically transparent, meaning that you can use it to stick a contact mic to things without worrying that it's going to interfere with the sound. And since then, I've gotten a number of suggestions about different ways that I could modify or improve the experiment that I did. And so today, I want to try out some of those things that have been suggested. And I want to start by replicating the results that I got last time. So I have this surface transducer, it's basically a little speaker, and I'm going to stick it to my guitar using double-sided tape. And I'll also put a little masking tape on there just to give it a little positive pressure. And then I'm going to stick this Metal Marshmallow Pro contact mic to my guitar. But first I'm going to put down a little piece of masking tape and then I'll trace around the contact mic so that I can be sure that I'm placing the mic in exactly the same spot every time. And to start, I'm just going to clamp the mic down to that spot. And I'm going to do an experiment that you've definitely seen before if you watch this channel, which is that I'm going to play white noise out of the surface transducer, and I'm going to record it with the contact mic, and I'm going to plot the spectrum of that recording. And just to be clear, the sound that you heard there is the sound recorded by the contact mic. And this is what that spectrum looks like. And there's nothing intrinsically special about this. I don't mean to say that this is what the microphone is supposed to sound like. Okay, I'm not claiming that this is some kind of platonic ideal. This is just kind of an arbitrary starting place that we can use to compare other things to. And so now I want to see how repeatable this measurement is. So I'm just going to remove the contact mic from the guitar, and then I'm going to clamp it back down in exactly the same place it was before. So nothing's really different about this. But I'm going to repeat the experiment. And this is what that looks like. And it's a little bit surprising that this is not identical to the first plot because nothing really changed, but it's similar enough, at least in its overall shape, and this kind of gives us a bound on how similar two supposedly identical sounds can be. And I'm going to use these two plots together kind of as a baseline for making comparisons. And so now I want to try to get a sound that's maximally dissimilar. So I have this piece of felt, and I'm going to fold it up and put it in between the microphone and the guitar. And I'm not even going to clamp the microphone down, I'm just going to set it on top of this piece of felt. And I do not expect sound to transmit very well through here. And that's kind of the point. So I'll do my experiment again. And this is what that looks like. And as you can see, the overall level is much lower than it was before. And that's, of course, because not very much energy transmitted through all of that felt. Although it is a little surprising that the shape of this plot is still pretty similar overall to the other two. So the felt didn't preferentially absorb any frequencies. It kind of absorbed all frequencies equally. And this kind of also begs the question, like, where's the bottom? Like, what's the quietest thing that we could expect to record? And so to find that out, I'm going to put my software into silence mode. And now when I do my experiment, no sound at all is going to come out of my surface transducer. And I'm just going to use the microphone to record silence. So here's what that looks like. And I guess this is kind of the noise floor of my whole recording setup. And what this shows is that the mic did pick something up through the felt in the previous trial, although not much. Additionally, whereas the first two baseline plots show how similar two sounds could potentially be, these two subsequent plots kind of show how dissimilar a sound could be from the baseline. At least we know that we're not going to record anything lower than this. So now I'd like to try some adhesives, and I'm going to start by taping the microphone down with this double-sided tape. And I kind of screwed up and bought this removable double-sided tape. I usually use the permanent kind, and I would not recommend the removable kind. It does not stick for very long, but at least it did stick for long enough for me to do my experiment. So this is what the plot looks like. 
and it looks basically the same as the two baseline plots. At least it is as similar to either of the baseline plots as those plots are to one another. And on this basis, I would claim that this tape is acoustically transparent, at least within my ability to measure it. And if you're skeptical about that qualifier, about being within my ability to measure it, hold your horses because I'm gonna come back to that in a few minutes. So now I wanna try sticking the mic down with this stuff. It's called Joe's Sticky Stuff, and this is something a viewer recommended. And I don't quite know how to explain this, I guess it's kind of a sticky, rubbery goo. So I'll just put some of that down and stick my mic to it. And this stuff is really strong. I really like how strong this is. And I'll repeat my experiment again. And yeah, there's the plot. And again, this is pretty much the same as the baseline plots. And again, I might say that this looks like it's acoustically transparent. And so now I wanna do the same thing again, but with this poster putty, which I use all the time. So I'll just put a little bit of this down and I'll stick my mic to that and I'll run my experiment again. And here again, we have another plot that looks basically the same as all the other plots. And again, I'm claiming that this is acoustically transparent. And then now just to be a little bit more extreme about this, I want to put down this kind of obnoxiously large blob of poster putty and stick my mic to that. And I hope that you're not using this much, but let's see what happens anyway. So there's the plot, and it's hard to see because there are too many plots at this point. So let me turn some of these off. And so this is the new plot, and there it is compared to the noise floor and to the original baseline measurement. And this one you can clearly see is different than all of the other ones. So clearly the higher frequencies are being attenuated by this putty. And what this shows, which is the same thing that I showed before, is that this stuff is not going to interfere with your recording as long as you don't use a mountain of it but this stuff is also not special in that regard because it performs about the same as all of the other adhesives that I just tested, at least within my ability to measure it. Now, if you're skeptical about that, or if you were paying attention as you were listening a moment ago, you might have noticed that all of these sounds that are supposedly the same as one another do in fact sound different. <sighs> For example, the double-sided tape sounds different than the sticky stuff. And in fact, even the two original baseline recordings sound different from one another. I'm actually really surprised at just how much difference there is in these two recordings. I mean, I know that the plots look different, so it shouldn't be that surprising that they also sound different, but I am actually really surprised at just how different they sound, especially because nothing really changed. The only thing that changed is I picked the microphone up and put it back down in exactly the same spot it was in before. And so that begs the question, do the different adhesives sound different because the adhesives are changing the sound, or do they sound different just because I very slightly repositioned the mic when I applied the adhesives? So hold on to that thought for a second, because the other thing I wanna do is I wanna hear what the guitar actually sounds like. So I wanna get rid of the white noise and actually play the guitar and record it with all of these different adhesives. And that's why I have this robotic finger attached to my guitar, because this can strum the guitar in exactly the same way each time. And so everything I've shown you up until this point, I repeated, but with the strumming instead of the white noise. And I'm just gonna play all of it for you in rapid succession so you can hear the differences. And a couple things that you should know before I do that is first of all, each plot is actually based on about 10 seconds worth of data. 
but I sped that up a little bit in the video so you don't have to wait so long between different trials. The other thing is that I didn't do anything to the sound in post as I sometimes do. Uh, and the result of that is that the level might seem like it's a little bit low. So yeah, here we go. So again, all of those sound a little bit different from one another. For example, the Joe's sticky stuff to my ear sounds noticeably brighter than the double-sided tape. But again, is that because the adhesives are behaving differently? Or is it just because the mic was very slightly repositioned when I applied the different adhesive? And so to try to get a handle on that, I did a whole second take. I re-recorded each of those sounds. And so here's that. And so again, all, everything sounds different from everything else, but even those differences are different than they were before. For instance, this time, the sticky stuff doesn't sound that much brighter than the double-sided tape. So I think that demonstrates that the difference in the sounds that we're hearing are just because the mic was slightly repositioned. And this result, which you can hear very clearly by listening to these recordings, isn't actually any different than the result that you get by looking at the plots. Because again, in both cases, what you see or hear is that all of these sounds that I'm claiming are the same as one another are at least as similar to the baseline recordings as the baselines are to one another. And that's what I mean when I say that these things are all equivalent or all acoustically transparent within my ability to measure them. Now, why I can't measure them any more precisely or why the sound seems to be so highly dependent on the very precise placement of the microphone, I do not know. And if anybody has any thoughts either on why that is the case or B, how I could control for that in an experiment like this, please let me know. But at least with that one qualifier, I'm still fairly confident in saying that this poster putty is acoustically transparent and I will probably keep using this. Although I'm really happy that this sticky stuff was pointed out to me because this stuff is really great and it holds a lot stronger than this stuff does. So I think I still probably prefer this for fast setups, but if I need to do something that's a little bit more permanent, I'll probably be using this. But anyway, I guess that's all I was gonna say about that. Thanks as usual for watching. Please subscribe. I'd like to get some more subscribers. <laughs> and if you enjoy this content and you wanna support me, maybe consider buying a contact mic from me. That would be helpful. But anyway, that's all for now. So I'll see you next time. Bye.